Welcome to Rovereto, Trentino Alto Arige, Laghetti dell'Eno. It's not that far from my hometown and I think it's still one of the best places where you can ride your bicycle and in the middle of nature, so I just love it. There's this river called Leno and everyone is going there, it's a beautiful place. It's quite famous here in my, in my city because you can just go there and chill and just take a swim inside it and then you just have a beautiful time. The water is pretty cold there but we don't have any sea here so that's the reason why everyone is going there. It's just super clean and you can really see through it. The name of the sport is trash bike. You just have to be confident with the bicycle. I'm pretty scared to jump without my bicycle, but with bicycle it just sounds different and then it's easier and then you, I'm more confident. You just feel it as if the bike is a part of your body and then you perfectly know where you want to land on your wheels. Every day, at least a couple of hours, I have to go out and ride my bicycle. It's been 10 years that I'm riding trials bike. I started because my father was riding motor trials bikes. And then when I was younger, I just saw him riding motorbikes. And then I was just keep on saying, please, daddy, just buy me a bike. And since that moment, I've been riding almost every day because I just love it. I just feel free. I just feel that I have to do it. This footage was taken at the Idaho Twin Falls Berrien Bridge. I would say that's the most beautiful spot we have ever, ever jumped before. So the way we discovered this location, we knew that the Berrien Bridge is the only one legal bridge in the United States where you can jump without any risk and get in trouble. As I believe, the group of three, 17 years ago, they negotiated with the government to make this bridge legal for base jumping. I would say that's the most safest spot I've ever, ever jumped in my life in Perrine Bridge. This place is just has to be visited even you're not jumping. It's a beautiful landscapes, it's a beautiful waterfall. It's a just best place to be in the US at least or in the world. When you actually get to the position for the jumping and then a truck passing you and the bridge is shaking and you have more scary feeling. It's all about adrenaline, right? Honestly, I never heard that there was any accidents at the Brian Bridge. If you're not reaching this spot, you have to land. You can easily land into the water. There is enough of space there to land safely. It's just about you and the universe, you know. Once you jump and you just trust to that moment, and when the cannot be deployed and it's opened and you feel this satisfaction and crazy feeling of adrenaline, it's like being on drugs sober. It's just you and the nature, and it's just amazing feeling. Yeah. <laughs> so I've been going to Lake Tahoe for quite a few years for different events, some being paddleboard races. The place that I launched from is Kings Beach. It's really amazing seeing the mountains and sometimes in the summer you can get lucky and see some snow on the mountains too. I'm originally from the East Coast, so we don't really have anything similar to that. And the water almost has the same kind of clarity you would expect somewhere in the Caribbean or, you know, out in Tahiti. It's quiet when you paddleboard out to the middle of the lake. There isn't any traffic. There aren't any city sounds. You really feel like you've immersed yourself into nature. On top of being in this beautiful environment, you can hang out on the beaches and really just get away from everything and relax. There's really just endless opportunities with the sport. If you want to be extreme, if you want to meditate, if you're young, if you're old, that's what keeps me coming back all the time is just the pure enjoyment of the sport and how many different modalities there are to enjoy. Welcome to Paris. I really like longboarding in, in Paris because all the longboard spots are accessible. It's calm, quiet, stress relieving. Paris is absolutely gorgeous. We have smooth concrete, Eiffel Tower as a background, and I mean, it's Paris. It has that attraction. There's a particular spot uh, where we used to longboard with the local community by the Seine River. And that is by far my favorite place to skate and hang out with friends. It's actually public spaces. It's open, it's for everybody. So we just went there the first week, second week, third week, and then we made it our home. Paris is a kind of a longboard hub and we have a lot of longboarders coming from all over the world to skate and just to experience that tourism box station. 
In Paris, there's very melting pot, all nationalities, all type of people, and that mix is very important to the longboard community and to the riders uh, themselves because we learn from each other. As long as I live here in Paris, I would definitely skate there all the time. I can't imagine myself skating somewhere else. If you come to Paris to meet the Lombard community, you're not going to be disappointed. Welcome to Switzerland, Jungfrau region. I just always wanted to do this jump, uh, but due to the technical approach and reaching the summit, it has taken me uh, quite a bit of planning and making it happen is a bit of a challenge. Starting at 3 o'clock in the morning, we went up in the dark and the only thing that was guiding us through was our headlight. Step by step, we're making our way up. Time of the time, you know, that air gets thinner and thinner the higher up you go. We bump into various different challenges such as uh, crevasses. We managed to get up on the top within five hours. Reaching Three, the summit is absolutely two, fantastic one, feeling. Go. Looking down, you're seeing glaciers farther than you like, could ever imagine. A glacier forest that I can see. Further away there, flying past it in almost 200 kilometers an hour. You're passing trees, you're passing glaciers. It's almost like going through an unreal kind of landscape. Because of the speed, you accelerate through glaciers, you accelerate through the forest and down to the famous valley. You're just sailing the wingsuit. It's almost getting into this hyper focus, which is uh, really, really unique for wingsuiting. The feeling is just like nothing else really. It's a feeling of freedom and it's a feeling of joy. Yeah, buddy! <laughs> Whoa! Welcome to the North Shores of Vancouver, Canada. This has always been an accessible location for me, but I never had a real reason to ever visit it. The North Shore has the fresh nature, the epic trails that have been developed there for many years already. Mountain biking has made this into the mecca that it is. Once you walk into the trails, you're under a canopy, protected from the rain that's falling always because you're up in the mountains, up in the clouds. You're in silence, surrounded by birds and waterfalls and fog over rolling the city. It's a dreamscape, it's a perfect place to be. First times I ever went up, I would actually just be skating by myself while a couple of friends would just be around walking the trails with me, shooting video, taking pictures. A lot of times you'd see other people just walking the trails with their dog or bikers bombing down past you, but in doing so there's still this community of where people were surprised to see our take on the trails because there's different uses for them and we were doing something very unique. After 20 years of skating on cement and experiencing all the streets from here to Europe and back, I found endless possibilities for joy in just the idea of skating. The feeling of off-road skating is pure joy. 